Good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to the Finos virtual meetup, where I am James McLeod, the Director of Community at Finos, the FinTech Open Source Foundation. And this afternoon and this morning, I am joined by Alan Clark from the CTO office at SUSE, um, who are, incidentally, um, a Linux Foundation member and big open source contributor. And Alan here, Alan is here to take us through his presentation, A Solid Foundation for, fin for FinTech. Um, but before we actually get started there, if um, anybody who is on this meetup would like to ask Alan a question, feel free to pop that into the WebEx chat where I'll pick it up and pass it across to Alan at the Q&A at the end of the presentation. Um, and also we will be um, sending a couple of t-shirts out to um, draw winners. So anybody who's registered um, to attend this uh, webinar, um, will be picked at random and we will send you um, a Finos um, t-shirt and that will be going to two people. And remember to subscribe um, to Finos by um, finding us on LinkedIn, also on Twitter, and also visit finos.org to get involved and register for news and updates. And remember, if you are a developer or an engineer, please visit uh, github.com forward slash Finos where you'll find our projects and where you can start leveraging and also contributing to code. So over to you, Alan. Welcome to um, the meetup this afternoon. Thank you, James. It's great to be here. Uh, I look forward to uh, working with this community um, for the, in, in the ongoing future. I'm pretty excited to be part of it. Um, just a little bit about me to, as an introduction since I'm new to everybody. My background is in history is, is software engineering, and particularly in the areas of networking, identity, and security. But I've been part of open source for many, many years, hence the gray hair, um, but I really enjoy it. Um, most recently, I've, I've participated in uh, several leadership positions in open source, including HPC, networking, uh, cloud, um, cloud native, Linux and, and several others. Um, so I've been part of, of many different projects, participating in many different roles within open source and truly enjoy being part of, of the open source community and, and getting to work with people from around the world. <clears throat> so today I wanted to talk about change, right? All of us are sitting here in a world that is constantly changing. And it, and it feels like the change is happening much more rapidly than it ever has in the past. So one thing is, you know, change is constant and it's very rapid. And it just feels like change is the new norm, right? We keep talking about the new normal, but the new normal just keeps changing. And what that means is that businesses and the leaders within those businesses have to deal with these ex external shocks, right? And um, Ever and ever increasing varieties of competition, regulations, and shifting customer expectations. I was listening to a, a presentation from a CEO of a large uh, firm a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about the impact of COVID-19 on their business. So they have a, a global business, and he was breaking it down week by week how it it affected their business. So he didn't just get on and say, well, COVID did this to us. He was going, no, we could sense a change weekly of what it was doing to our business. And I tried to capture his comments and uh, I liked what he said here. He says, you know, we had to learn to be flexible and adaptable as every week has been different during the pandemic. There's more chapters to be written, right? We're sure that the summers, they're not sure what the summer is going to look like, how the economy is going to recover. There's so many di new dynamics that we're putting a premium on being really responsive, really agile, really flexible, and we're taking a much shorter term horizon as we think about the business. And that fits with what I'm seeing I'm, uh, when I'm talking to businesses. Things are changing such rapidly. What used to be long-term projects or projects that we were going to get to sometime in the future are now all of a sudden being thrown into the forefront and and needing to adapt to those and implement those very rapidly so when he threw out those words that they've got to be really agile really flexible 
and looking at a much shorter term horizon, I could really relate with that. And it's not just the businesses. If you think about it, this change that's happening is really impacting all of us. And I wanted to give you a very simple example. Um, and maybe it's a very US centric example. And maybe it's a local example, but um, if I'm, I'm based here in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. And one thing that we've noticed here is signs are going up in all the windows in the, you know, in the stores saying, hey, we're asking customers to give us exact change or to use contactless payments, you know, such as credit cards or debit cards or mobile wallets, right? There's a variety of those. But the, the impact is this, it says um, there was an article that came out in the local paper and they were talking about how the Utah banks here are having a difficult time coming up with coins to supply to the area businesses. Um, and that's because the Federal Reserve here in the US has put a limit on the bank's request for coins. Um, and so the banks don't have the coins to be able to give to those businesses. So we have a shortage of, of coins, kind of bizarre, isn't it? And so the Federal Reserve reported to Congress that the supply of coins has shrank uh, for two reasons. One is the economy, right, has slowed down uh, because of the pandemic. And that's because Americans weren't spending near as much as when, you know, the, before the pandemic hit. The second one is kind of interesting. Well, and it slowed down, but then also the, the impact of everybody is all of a sudden using plastic and, and digital currencies over cash and coin. But the other impact was um, here when everybody's being, um, you know, stuck at home, working from home and so forth. They said, you know, it's really hard to produce coins when everybody's working from home. So uh, in the article that came out here locally, the, the part that I find that was hilarious is the local banks were asking everybody to go find those jars of coins that they've all been just throwing in the corner and to bring them in and let them trade them in because um, they were in need of coins. Um, so it's, I just found that pretty funny that even things like having coins in your pocket uh, is, is changing, right? Is impacting all of us. And an impact of businesses, if the business can't get coins then they have to adjust their prices to eliminate those coins. So it changes the price of the items that we're actually purchasing. So it's kind of interesting to think about how this change is impacting all of us. Now, the, uh, to succeed, that means that companies have to change, right? We can't stay static. So the best companies and organizations understand that by embracing these change, not fearing them, not fighting them, but embracing these change, changes and the key is to connect the right people, the right ideas and the right dots. When we can do that, we can move forward and we can adapt to those changes. So they understand that a flexible IT infrastructure is key, right? They are ready and, and need to support digital transformation. And this is a, is a key piece in succeeding in this world of constant change that we have today. Um, leading companies and organizations know that their differentiating IT infrastructure can't be invented behind closed doors. They know that they need what we call the power of many. And the secret of this combination is a connection, as I stated, is people, open communities, skills, and technologies. And so you need to seek clear answers to complicated questions by choosing to work with organizations that need agility and stability in a solution choosing to work with organizations that want true openness and no lock-in. And you don't stop until you collaboratively find the means to get there. So SUSE was born from this concept, the concept of the power of many. Its core, the core of its values is made up of its customers, employees, partners, and the development community. These define SUSE and the work that we do through open collaboration and, and innovation. So SUSE is, is the largest independent provider of open source software. So SUSE is a fully open source company, right? 
our vision, SUSE's vision is to be the uh, leading, most innovative and trusted partner in providing true open source technologies for the enterprise to simplify, accelerate, and uh, modernize. So let me say that again, to simplify, modernize and accelerate traditional and cloud and native cloud and edge solutions. So um, Financial Times uh, recently reported that since the start of COVID-19 or coronavirus, banks are under pressure from the financial costs of the lockdown, right? Which is true to, to most businesses. But in the bank's case, this decline in, in economic activity has created an explosion of loan losses, right? Which the banks are now having to look at the opportunities to cut costs. Yet at the same time, because of the changes from, from the virus, they have a driving challenge to improve their customer services, right? All of a sudden we've got remote workers, we've got to supply remote services to those workers and to our customers because they can no longer come into the facilities when they're closed. We have the physical distancing, contactless transactions are, are, are either being mandated or are preferred. Right, those types of things are, are becoming a challenge towards customer services. So they've got this balance. And at the same time, IT is being tasked with either maintaining or increasing their security. People have time on their hands to create havoc. And they need to increase that reliability. More and more, we're relying on those services for our businesses because of that distancing. So while the financial industry is laser focused on these needs and trying to make that balance, we find that this is pretty much a general drive for most industries, right? These needs are very much similar. That's why I really like SUSE's vision to simplify, modernize, and accelerate. I think they're very spot on for today's uh, business needs. So simplifying your IT infrastructure really is a focus on how to run your business, right? You wanna be able to securely manage and run your application. So SUSE enables you to update your systems without downtime and, and being able to achieve nonstop IT, right? So running your business in a simplified way means don't create complications of having to shut things down, particularly at the worst times of the day, right? This means that you can always count on your IT solutions being there 24 by seven with no disruptions, which gives you faster response time which means you'll have more engaged workforce because they're not sitting there downtime, twiddling their thumbs, wondering what's going on. But it also more importantly means that you're gonna have happy customers, right? Think about it from our perspective as users. We're never happy when we try to access a service and find that it's down and I can't get my work done. Secondly, on, on the need to modernize, we need to modernize our applications to prepare them for this future computing world. And Modernization doesn't mean that it has to conflict with simplification. With a con consistent platform to manage your different environments as if they were one, businesses can run legacy workloads alongside with things like modernized cloud native applications. Businesses can take advantage of, a cloud, of the cloud and on-prem services while remaining fully in control. With modernization comes open source, of course, right? With open source, you can leverage cutting edge innovation in the most cost effective manner. So lastly, accelerate and be able to scale your business through digitization, right? So to, to survive in today's world, businesses need applications that deliver great customer experiences and provide the right business insights. This includes the advance through AI, high performance computing and analytics. I'm very excited about these new generations of solutions that are embracing these new technologies and delivering these new services and new forms of services to our customers. So at SUSU, we talk a lot about consistency. Consistency from the core, which is our traditional data centers and the center of our businesses, to the cloud and out to the edge. That same report that I mentioned earlier from Financial Times, they're reporting that there's a huge uptake in financial services moving 
services such as risk management modeling to the cloud, while services, particularly services involving personal information and trading data have not moved to the cloud at this time. So what makes most technical sense is to use data as your gravity well. Think about it in that manner, right? Um, and creating well-defined and modeled services across the core to the cloud to the edge. So place the service where it makes sense. Where's the data? Where should the service reside? But in doing that, you need that flexibility to either move that service or to break that service up and place it close to where the data resides. So you need that flexibility. This is what's driving what we call a software-defined infrastructure, or SDI for short. So let me take let's take a look at a couple of examples here, right? So uh, in the area of financial services, for example, we have high frequency uh, algorithmic trading, financial modeling, uh, and analysis, black box trading, algorithmic processing, complex financial risk analysis, and order routing, and in general, just more reliable systems, right? So this quickly highlights the need for SDI constructs around HPC and low, late, uh, low, ultra low latency, for example. But it also demonstrates the need for SDI, which brings in greater policy-based infrastructure control, automated management, provisioning, configuration, and other software-based solutions in the banking industry. With today's business banking services, such as internet banking, credit and debit card processing, credit approvals, treasury operations, modernizing these types of applications and accelerating the, the delivery of new cloud uh, native applications is also key in this digital transformation. And then of course we have the innovation that's happening at the edge. And this could be areas such as field offices for insurance groups, for example, or running ATMs, right? Those are very known areas of the edge. And, but what's happening is we're beginning to see and accelerated seeing uh, hosting requests for new types of business applications. And what this is driving is the need for multifunction platforms at the edge, right? The need for <clears throat> better caching out there on the edge, some autonomy at the edge, right? The, the networking and so forth may not be as reliable as we push that edge further out. But it also drives the need for consistency of your infrastructure truly out to the edge. So pushing those needs, pushing out to the edge can introduce completely new business models and subsequently can transform existing products and services, hence going back to the need for SDI. Then, of course, we can accelerate the business by incorporating artificial intelligence, particularly out there at the edge, put some smarts out there in the edge to do some filtering and processing, and then enhancing our high performance and time sensitive workloads. Huge impact on our business when we can do that. So now, according to Gartner, I love this quote from Gartner, it says, open source is the backbone for digital innovation. I truly believe that, and I've seen the the advent of uh, growth of open source over the last several years. And examples abound on how um, open source initiatives, uh, including some of those that I've shown on earlier slides, are driving substantial innovations, particularly in areas such as mobile, big data, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. And SUSE has been a leading entity in the charge of innovation and for uh, driving the innovation for infrastructure software. So let me give some examples of how SUSE is involved. SUSE lives the ethos of open source and is at the forefront of true open source solutions. There's thousands and thousands of packages that SUSE is involved with, pulling those together to help build solutions uh, in today's world. So, True open source is, is just built into SUSE's DNA. SUSE knows how to take open source and make open source work, particularly in an enterprise environment. We've demonstrated that through our pervasive enterprise-wide mission critical solutions. That's why four out of five of the world's largest banks are using SUSE Linux, SUSE Linux Enterprise. True open source leverages the power of many. 
to automate everyday tasks and to unleash human creativity. Doing so allows us to focus on new opportunities, new ways to innovate, and ability to face the disruption of unknown without any borders or limits. And true open source doesn't just mean open code. It means open development, it means open processes, and open support. SUSE brings peace of mind to the infrastructure layer, whether that be in the cloud, in a hybrid environment, or on-premise and out to the edge. And as I mentioned, we automate the we, we strive to automate the mundane to reduce human error and manual processes. This is the power of, of, of software defined infrastructure. So the power of many enhances our ability to develop engaging products and solutions where your customers are at or where they're going to be at, including places out on the edge. So by combining the thousands of open source projects into a solid, flexible, innovative solutions, we can solve challenges in today's rapidly changing world. The key is a solid, consistent framework of simplify, modernize, and accelerate. And that's my presentation for today. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Alan. Um, great presentation. Thank you. And before we actually get across to the Q&A, so just to remind people on the call, if you'd like to ask um, Alan a question, just um, fire your question into the into the chat. Um, but before we, we go there, I'd like to announce um, our two uh, Finos t-shirt winners. Um, the first is, um, I believe this is Xavier uh, from I IBM, and also Sylvie, from Lloyd's Banking Group. Um, well done, you've um, both won um, a Finos t-shirt. We'll get in contact with you in order to get your um, details. Um, and yeah, we'll ship that. Um, so before everybody uh, puts a question into the chat, I've actually got a question for you, Alan. Um, sure. My question to you is, do you have an example of where SUSE is currently found in banking that may not be realized within the finance community? Uh, that's a very good question, James, uh, and I'm not going to name any companies because uh, the example I'll give you is actually one where I can't. Um, so we very much, it's its easy to think of SUSE, particularly in the analytics and, and analysis, risk analysis space. Um, we're very prevalent in the core data centers, right? Running mission critical services, uh, particularly like the analytics um, and so forth. Um, lesser known is when we push out towards the edge. So uh, running SUSE out and, and, and clear out into embedded systems like ATMs, for example, but out into the field offices and so forth. And a lot of times it goes back to this model as I, as I talked about earlier. SUSE very much works with partners, works with its customers and works with open source. And a lot of solutions are actually delivered through our partners. And so sometimes you'll find that those solutions has SUSE embedded and you don't even realize it. Um, so you may be running those solutions and, and you don't even realize that, that they're sitting there. Um, so we're scattered throughout these businesses. And as I mentioned before, four out of the five top world banks are running SUSE. So, so we're there in the data center, we're well known in the data center, but we extend clear out to the edge. Right, that's great. And my next question to you is um, for anybody on the call who is actually looking to accelerate engineering within the finance industry, can you give an example of how they can actually engage with CISA in order to really accelerate that digital transformation? So I would say let's, uh, let's well, there's a, there's a couple of different layers here when you think about that question, right? As a developer, the best way to engage with SUSE is through the open source communities. Um, we're very much focused in into the communities and working with the communities. Everything we do and develop, we push back into open source. And so you'll find um, our engineers and uh, Alliance folks and so forth are actually engaged uh, within those communities. Um, at the executive levels, <clears throat> even our customer executives and so forth get engaged with, uh, with these communities. Um, 
and at the executive levels, we, we try to be, uh, like I mentioned earlier, our DNA is being open. Um, so we're very much reaching out to meet with even the executives uh, through forums and, and so forth. Um, so as a developer, I would particularly say, let's meet up in, in, the, uh, in the open source communities and work together. That's great. My um my final question. So I'm hogging the the airwaves here. Um, so looking at the SUSE organization on GitHub, so github.com forward slash SUSE, I can see that you have 309 repositories um within that organization. Can you kind of give us some guidance on where engineers should actually go to in order to you know understand um the organization and also where to start if um you know there are any good first issues or you know any um issues that people can actually engage with um sure. from within the open source community sure yeah there's a variety of there's a, a variety of uh, components or, or i wouldn't say products but components in open source projects out there under github under susa um some of those i i actually haven't gone out to, to analyze you know the percentages but i would suspect that a lot of those are actually folded into the open susa community uh, I know some of those are, are folded under uh, some of the other projects. Uh, SUSE is involved with many, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a, a wide variety of open source projects out there in the communities, um, all the way from you know Cloud Foundry to the Linux kernel, right? And um, so it's not just the repositories that you see on, out under SUSE's name in GitHub, but those projects within um several foundations out there as well right so we're pushing changes we're pushing code into cloud foundry into gcc into the linux kernel and so forth um so the so the best way to engage uh is to go to those communities of interest right go to where that those repositories are pointing to to the communities that are associated with those repositories and, and meet meet up with this in their communication channels. And again, those vary depending on what the communities are, right? It could be everything from IRC to mailing lists to, to Slack channels and so forth. So we like to communicate through the community channels. Right, that's great. And I'd like to say thank you to Mike Nelson for actually putting um, a great link into chat, which is um, uh, www.explorecesa.dev forward slash caps and box. Um, that was a recommended link. So thank one. you for putting that in there. Um, and unless somebody else has got a question to ask, um, I would like to actually thank you, Alan, um, from the CTO office of SUSE for your presentation this afternoon. And if anybody um, on the meetup would like to find out more about um, Finos or join a Finos project, feel free to go over to github.com forward slash Finos and take a look through the projects that we have within our organization or find us at finos.org where you can get involved and register for news and updates. And you can also subscribe to us on LinkedIn and follow us on Twitter. And with that, I'd like to say thank you to Alan for your presentation this afternoon. Thank you thank to you, the winners of our t-shirts and thank you everybody for being here. Thank you. All the best, have a great day um, and keep um, an eye on LinkedIn for our next presentation. Thank you. Bye.